block and inline elements. Remember, every element is inside its own invisible box. This box will either be a block or an inline element. Block level elements, by default, take up 100% of the space that they have, stretching from right to left as far as they can. This means they will not allow other elements to share the line that they're on. So they appear to start on a new line in the browser window. These include these types of elements. Inline elements, by default, will allow other elements to share the same line as long as there's room. Then they will only wrap to the next line once it's full. They will only take up as much width as necessary. These include these type of elements. The H1 element and all the paragraphs here are block level elements. If I place a border around them, you can see that they take up all the space they can. However, if we place some images side by side, as long as there's room, they will share the horizontal space available. You can change the defaults of inline and block elements with the display property. If I wanted to make a block element into an inline element, I would target it in CSS and use the display inline declaration. If I wanted to make an inline element into a block level element, I would use the display block declaration. There's also one more display property value, inline block. It's kind of a mix between the two. It would cause a block level element to flow like an inline element, but it will retain other features of a block level element, like allowing you to set widths and heights on the element and top and bottom margins would work more predictably. The declaration you would use is display inline block. Let's demonstrate the difference here. Here we have three spans, one inline, one inline block, and one block. Notice the difference between the three. Even though the widths and heights are all set the same between the three, the inline width, heights, and margins, padding and bottom are not always what is expected. Inline block is sometimes a better choice for a simple way to align a few items side by side. Because of these different display values, centering elements on our page works differently with different elements. Two common ways to center elements are text align center and margin zero auto. Text align center will center the contents of the box. So if I put text align center on the H1 or the P, then the content will get centered inside that invisible box or container. Margin zero auto will center the box itself. The first value refers to the top and bottom margin. In our case, we'll just leave them zero. The second value refers to the right and left. It will automatically give an equal gap on each side of the box. With margin zero auto, if the width of the element takes the whole space, you won't see the centering. There needs to be a width set so there is space on each side of the side to automatically give an equal measurement on each side. Or in other words, the box needs a width, otherwise it will take up the whole width of the page. So if I give the H1 and P a width, the contents are still centered inside the box with the text line center, but I could use margin zero auto to center the box itself. If I try text align center with an image, which is an inline element, it doesn't appear to center. That's because its border is tight around the image. The content in, is the image and it's already centered inside its tight border. But we can change the image to display block, give it a width, then we can center it with margin zero auto. Or we could place the image inside of a block level element and then use text align center to center the contents of the element which would include that child element.